Greetings, scholars! That picture right there is you, by the way. Welcome to Episode 1, Slopes and Channeling. So before we dive into the calculus, let's go over some stock market basics. Obviously, you're watching this video because you want to make money, and the point of the stock market is to make as much money as possible. So in general, you want to buy low and sell high. Let's look at Apple stock. You want to buy it here and sell it here. Easy, right? Well, the obvious problem is that none of us can predict the future. Or can we? No. But we can approximate it, and we can also lower the risk as much as possible. Imagine you went to a casino, and I told you you would only be right 50% of the time. But I also told you that when you were right, you would win twice as much as when you were wrong. Although it does require some sort of risk, we can see that if this promise was kept, it would be a good strategy. And that's basically the idea behind trading. No one is going to be right 100% of the time, but you can make significant profits through risk management. So how do we approximate the future? Well, in trading and in calculus, we use what's called a best fit line. Let's look at this price fluctuation. Overall, it's very chaotic, but in general, it follows this line. The magic here is that if this line is correct, we can project this into the future and predict what kind of profits we can expect. So you may want to buy here and sell here. Now you've made some money. At this point, you might be thinking, you haven't even talked about calculus at all. But I actually have. Calculus is simply the study of rates of change. If you've ever been in a boring class, looked up at the clock to see how fast the second hand is moving, and then estimated how long it would take for the rest of the class, then you have studied calculus. Let's look at the stock chart again and see why our trade was so profitable. It's because the best fit line was sloped upwards. Obviously if our slope was negative, we would have lost money. And that's why slopes are so important. You should care about slopes because higher slopes means higher profits. And in calculus, a slope is defined as a change in the rise over a change in the run. But what is rise and run? The easiest way to calculate rise and run is to pick two points on the line and find the difference. And in a math world, we call this a secant line. The difference between the two price values is the rise, and the difference between the two time values is the run. Let's try to improve our profits a little bit. We'll look at Apple stock again. If we strictly followed the trend line, we'd buy here and sell here, which is pretty good, but would have been even better to buy here and sell here. You might be thinking, hindsight's 2020. you could have never made that call if you were really trading. But actually, you could have found it by using support and resistance lines. The resistance lines are created by connecting the highs, and the support lines are made by connecting the lows. These support and resistance lines can be used to form channels and wedges. A channel is formed when the support and the resistance lines are relatively parallel to each other, and a wedge is formed when they are not parallel. So how does this connect to calculus? Well, you can't tell if two lines are parallel unless you can calculate the slope. Once you calculate the slope, you can find if your trend is getting stronger, like in this example, or weaker, like in this example. If the support has a higher slope than the resistance, it usually means the trend is weakening, and you should probably avoid buying the stock. But, if the support has a lower slope than the resistance, it means that the trend is strengthening and you should probably buy. Let's end by talking about some nerdy math definitions. In order to understand the future episodes, you need to understand how functions are defined. And you might have noticed that a stock chart is just a function chart. Changing time causes the price to change, and so time is the independent variable. Now you may think, maybe price causes time to change, how would you even know? Let's look at a graph. These points have the same price, but different dates. Let me show you what would happen if price was actually the independent variable. Look at those same two points. If I asked you how price causes time to change, you'd look at these points and be extremely confused. Because one input is leading to two outputs. Imagine I own a factor that makes soccer balls, and I put the same components in the same order, in the same process, and get two different balls. That would be very strange and I'd probably start firing people. The predictability of the outputs based on the inputs is what makes it useful to traders as well as mathematicians. And so when you're trading, don't try to control the market. Understand that it changes with time. So just to recap on this lesson, you're going to buy low and sell high to make profits. You're going to use best fit lines to approximate chaotic stocks. The higher the slope means the higher the profits. Using support and resistance lines can show you if the trend is weakening or strengthening. And most importantly, calculus is just a study of rates of change. 